everybody. It's me, Man Alone. And uh, welcome. Hey, a thousand subscribers. Pretty cool. Well, what, what took you all so long? What? Listen, if, if you're watching this video now and you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. But if you have subscribed, why are you only subscribed once? I need nine or ten subscriptions out of every person here. Let's, um, let's try to be respectful, okay? Uh, so... <clears throat> Welcome. Uh, this is a video that uh, has been sort of uh, bubbling in my mind for a while. Um, I, I know we're eager to get back to the Dragon Bane solo campaign, but I must keep my commitment to myself to only solo play when the mood strikes me because it's a very definitive moment that the mood strikes me, usually about once a week. And I feel that if I start doing it when I'm not interested in doing it, I sort of resent it. I feel tired out by it, and I'm less likely to do it the next time. And I don't want to to have some sort of scenario where I'm like, it's just too much. I can't do my YouTube channel where I play games. Uh, so I don't I don't want to go there. But uh, I do recognize that it, you know, I I do recognize that I love all of you, and I want to be in communication with all of you as I am able. Uh, obviously, this is a busy time for me, but. Uh, I want to put out uh, some other videos in between the campaign videos just to say, hey, hello, how are you? And this one um, I've been thinking about for a while, and I, I finally sat down and made this list today. And this is going to be a video of 12 things that I would like to see in my perfect, uh, in my ideal solo uh, RPG game. And part of this was uh, working through the process of, of trying to create my own. Uh, I am currently learning how to use Affinity Publisher and have laid out about half, about 14 out of 25, I guess a little over half of my pocket quest submission that I'm hoping to get in uh, later this week. And man, this is uh, this is probably the least fun I've ever had with uh, 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 RPGs, just doing design work. For those of you who do this for a living, um, my, my, I was about to say my heart will go on. That's Celine Dion. My heart goes out to you. And my heart will go on for you uh, because this is just really tedious. But I'm also working on something that is a lot of fun, which I am making a supplement uh, for Dragon Bane uh, that has to do with the frog people, which I feel is an underused uh, un other kin in the new bestiary. So keep a lookout for that. Um, and yeah, so <clears throat> uh, let's let's talk about it. This is this is 12 things that I thought about that I would like to see in an ideal RPG. And again, this my process of making this not again i haven't said this yet in creating my game i started to realize that certain things started to creep in my games that i don't necessarily like or not that i don't like but they're not my favorite maybe and and some some things i don't like as well and i do this because you know when you are open to a lot of feedback you are trying to balance all the different like cogs of a game at the same time you get a lot of ideas from people. It's very easy, especially for someone like me, to, to kind of lose the thread on where I stop and where somebody else begins. And it's why I've sort of, um, uh, you know, treasure the feedback, but also try to try to siphon that a little bit so that um, I can keep, stay true to myself. Because I think in, you know, I, I spend in a, too much time thinking about, like, what do people, what would people want to see in this game or what would they prefer which is good. I don't think that's completely irrelevant, but I also need to spend uh, as much or more time thinking of like, what do I want in this game? And so I've lost sight of some of that and I want to come back to that. And one of the things that has caused me to come back to that is what can only be described over as a bloodlust uh, uh, for this game that I, I cannot believe it has not been in my radar. It's a th uh, Across a Thousand Dead Worlds um, that I still think is in pre-order, although I see some people doing reviews of it with this enormous hardcover book. It looks like Starforged level size book. Uh, the pre-order is like 60 pounds. That's a little tough, but man, it's 450 pages. I don't know. I might have to do it. We'll see. Uh, I, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. That's too much. Well, all right. We'll talk about this with myself off camera. Uh, talking about yourself off camera is also known as solo RPG playing. And this is a list of 12 things uh, that I like in my ideal solo RPG. So without further ado, number one. Uh -huh. Okay, um, it makes me feel like anything can happen. Okay, so uh, obviously 
you know, the most incredible sandbox video game has its limits, okay? Like, uh, what was that game that got, like, a lot of press a few years ago where you could, like, go out into space? I actually, was it Outer Wilds, maybe? I forget which one it was, but it was like, oh, yeah, there's, like, a, a, a billion different randomized planets you can go to. You could settle your own planet. And this is absolutely true. You could do so much in that game. You could plant gardens. You could build whole, you know, skyscraper civilizations. You cannot open like a lemonade stand with with your your best friend Hugh, right? And and obviously, uh, that's not a lot of designers are going to think of Hugh um, when when it comes to design. But this is just a fact: is that the only game that can capture all possible possibilities is this is the world right and so it's not going to be unlimited but i do want to have the sense that that the the story can go in a direction that i was not expecting and that if it goes in that direction i will have the tools to deal with that i will have the ability to um you know still be able to apply the mechanics of the game and be able to play that out and incorporate it in my game. And so to do this, you know, it, it some of this is pretty obvious, right? We need like oracles, we need, you know, dice rolling mechanics, we need things to deal with progression and inventory and stuff like that. But there's also a little bit of finesse to it. You know, um, I, I honestly think uh, this one and probably a lot of them, the game that does the best at it, which is the most men the most suggested but those who are solo players like have the most hot takes on it it is clearly the best is starforge by sean tomkin um it's it's clearly the best solo rpg and i think that anybody who who has critiques of it you, you've got to be you should you should have critiques of every game you know but but you got to be kidding yourself if you don't think that that is like a masterful game that sets the bar and i know some people have like powered by the apocalypse issues hang-ups about that um i i don't prefer pbta but in star Force and iron sworn like it's it doesn't seem like that intrusive and just the whole setup of the universe and why you're on your mission and what the truths are about everything i mean this is really that really is the model for creating creating this universe okay um and you know what? I'm going to, uh, I think that makes me think of another one. Um, okay. 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 Um, so that leads me to it. You can, it's a game where, uh, it creates an interesting universe, not just an interesting character. I like interesting characters, but the characters that are interesting should emerge from the universe they are in. There should be something about this fictional reality that has provoked this to happen or there should be something about the fictional reality that is intensified or heightened or um toggled just a little bit or a lot of it uh, in fact uh, probably prefer a lot of it um because when you create an interesting universe that's soil right if you create just an interesting character an interesting gimmick that's a flower it's nice it's pretty to look at it smells good put it in the cup you know what happens after five days right and so if we have fertile soil instead a lot of stuff could come up now one of the things that that um people might say to this is and, and i know this is comes down to preference but some people will say well i don't um I, it's too much. I'm overwhelmed by this. And, and I think that that is fair. But at the same time, solo role playing is a skill, just like any other skill. And, you know, I, I was not always able to solo role play. You have to, you have to practice that. And so I think sometimes when people are too dismissive of things, because they say this is too wide, it's too open. Um, I think that that is, partly preference and maybe some of it is capability fear um you know i i think being overwhelmed that's normal just feeling like wow there's too much uh for me to manage here and so the presentation has to be taught and once again it really starforge it just doesn't i know this is like not new news you know i i wish i had a, a incoming hotter take here but it just does this in, in a superior way um okay um, and so I'm realizing now some of these maybe are a little bit redundant, but that that's okay. 
All right. So uh, here's here's one uh, offers me oracles, but doesn't drown me in them. You know, I think that um, oracles are really good, and oracles uh, are the 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 engine of the solo RPG. I mean, there's no two ways about it. There are other ways of creating possibilities, um, but but the truth is that at some point, unless you're unless you're just thinking about something, which could be a form of it, um, you need something to referee, right? Because you're working from your suggested your subjective experience. And so you're always gonna like preference your own success, preference your own ease. And it's hard to balance, um, you know, hardship versus ease versus uh, chaos versus order, unless you have this outside mechanic to, to frustrate you. And it is in this frustration that, um, that is the rain, the water for the garden. I'm already smelling a new video coming forth, a nice gardening video. Um, okay, so I like it. Uh, I like oracles, but sometimes there are some games that are like now featuring 900 oracles. Um, one of the reasons you know that I, I shy away from some systems that people say, oh, it's incredible. They got oracles for everything. They got oracles for the type of... Um, you know, there's the, there, they have an oracle that tells you just kind of what radishes there are, you know, do you want them in a jar, uh, pickled, you know, do you want them fresh? And it's like, I don't need a radish oracle. Okay. Like I'm, I'll, I'll handle that. Don't worry about me. If a radish comes up in the story, I, I'm confident in myself to, to work through that. Um, but I do, I do like them obviously, but I think there, there is sometimes like an overboard with them and it's overboard because either there's too much and I'm not going to use them or, um, there's so many that I, instead of like playing a game, I'm just constantly like, or oracles, oracle. Okay. Here's another oracle. And, and what kind of hat is that? Okay. There we go. And is there a fly on the hat? Okay. There's two flies on the brim of the hat. What's their names? Larry and Pietrush. Okay. Perfect. And it's just like, we, I, at some point I need to spin the cogs in my brain. Uh, that said, I want some flow charts, cheat sheets, and diagrams. Uh, as much as I, as much as I think that you know, um, there is, like I said, the skill and practice part involved. The first time I play a game, and it doesn't. It, I've always been this way, and I know some of you have to be like this, or else I'm all I'm truly alone in this world. You could explain a board game to me from start to finish, I will nod and say, uh-huh, okay, okay, everything you say. And then to sit down and play it the first time, I will have no idea what to do. Because there is a certain moment when the rubber hits the road that all of these instructions that you just got sort of burst forth at the same time and you were overwhelmed by them. You know, it's like seeing a uh, a star collapse in your brain and you're like oh the horror the majesty it's too much you're overwhelmed by it and because of that I need to refer back and so when I do refer back I need I, I prefer to have some things that I can easily go through and go okay okay so if I do this 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 and this if the only thing that you have is paragraphs that's harder for me to manage and I will say that's one of my few critiques about uh, Dragon Bane is almost all instructions come in paragraphs. There's there's no diagrams. I shouldn't say there's none. I'm trying to think if there's any. Mm. There's not many diagrams. A lot of it comes in paragraphs. And so as I'm trying to think of how to do something in the game, I'm constantly going, preening through the index. It's not listed under the name I think it is. I'm paging through, I'm flipping. Oh no, that's not, that's uh, armor in your inventory. I'm looking at like armor when you hit. Etc. And it just again, just like the constant oracle dice rolls, this is also taking me out of the game. Okay. Um, all right. This one kind of I think goes with uh, well, a few of these I think. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this two here, it trusts me to make things work, but it doesn't make me do their job for them. Okay. So like. Um, that could have been probably said more elegantly. That's one that, um, again, I think requires a little bit of finesse, right? I I don't mind 
when there are parts of a solo game that that come up and there is no explicit instruction for it because it's a unique situation that happens so rarely or only happens in my game because of the weird little twisted take I put on the game that the 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 narrative components you know exceed surpass out uh outgrow the mechanic and I want a game to be able to just say, yeah, you know, if that happens, go with your gut, rule cool, um, apply this rule best you can, whatever. Trust me to do that. And this is something that I'm really telling myself because I do too much handholding in my RPG writing and it makes it for way too much bloat. And so it's something I'm learning. But I want it to trust me to make it work, but I don't feel like doing the job for the writer. Um, I won't name names, but there was an RPG that I, I, I've been paging through and I've featured on here before that has several points in it that just says, yeah, you know, um, if this happens, just figure it out. Or, uh, yeah, if you um, determine a way to divide this up. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. This seems like something that I should have instructions for. I don't want this to be arbitrary. It's like a, a, a thing I don't want to be arbitrary. I want it to be rule bound. And I think there is sometimes... Uh, the opposite side of like too much hand holding is like throwing the player in the pool and being like, I made you this game now swim in it, you know? And it's like, Hey, I need you to, I need you to tell me what, like, what, what you want me to do. And, and I will, cr I will, you know, take that seed and germinate it, but I need the seed. And <laughs> interestingly, um, there is, how should I say this? I do think that sometimes not explaining things um, allows for a person to just fill in things in their mind. And, and I think that can be good. Again, this is a finesse question. But I do think that um, sometimes people leave stuff out to the point that it's like, did I just pay for this? And, and yeah, I'll, I'll say I guess I'll just say the thing I'm hesitating about. Unless a game is specifically marketed as like, this is a one page game or like this is like a pamphlet game or an index card or this quick game. But there are so many games on itch.io or drive through RPG that are like $15 and you download it and it's like 12 pages. And that's I, I can't help it. Like even I support these artists. I think, you know, it, it's not like it tricks you. It lists it's on it lists the page number on there, but you know, I, I don't always read those things and, and sometimes I'm just like, Are you kidding me? Like I would be embarrassed to price something that small for that much money. You know, and, and I think that that sometimes um because there is so much of feeling in the opposite direction in, in the artistic community of like, we don't get paid enough. We don't get uh, what we deserve. People steal our stuff. I think it can go in the opposite direction to be like, oh man, this thing I've created is just like, you want this? It's gold. You know, this is real special. This is truly a, a, a nugget from my brain. And it's like, okay, well, compare this. I have 31 videos on my YouTube channel. Um, like I have not received any money for it yet, nor do I plan on it. Uh, because this is not my main source of income. So if it is your main source of income, I get it. Maybe in that respect, like take a quick like microeconomics class so you understand supply and demand. But I think sometimes people sort of overvalue the the their their words to literally mathematically overvalue their words. Like some of these, you're paying like nine cents a word, and that's that's maybe too much. I've said too much. I'm going to get in trouble. The last one in here is definitely going to get me in trouble, which is why I put it last. Um, uh, this, this, this is this is another one. I think is a restatement. Builds me a house, but doesn't decorate it. Um, yeah. So this is a. I think this is a. The reason I had to scratch this out is because as I was writing this, I think I was getting so like emotionally charged that I I wrote it to a person because I wrote, build me a house, but don't decorate it. And I'm like, wait, you're not, who are you yelling at? So yeah, build, builds me a house, but doesn't decorate it. And so I want there to be a schema. I want there to be a situation. I want there to be a universe. Um, sometimes, you know, like... Uh, RPGs can be too open 
I always have trouble opening like Mythic, even though I think that that is uh, the, the closest you can get to like a, a level of genius work, uh, um, you know, like defensible dissertation level genius work. But like, I just, it's too broad. It's too open. I need there to be something. And if there isn't something, you know, uh, expressly listed, then there needs to be a system for creating that. Again, Starforge does this very well. You have the forge, and then it tells you, like, why are people there? Why are people coming, et cetera? Um, however, I will say I like it when there is a set scenario that everyone playing this game is influenced by. For an example, like Mork Borg, Mork Borg is, is messed up. I mean, they, apparently they had to send these books. The designer kept being like, there has to be some thing wrong are you really want us to like print these blank books but like everybody who plays Mork Borg is like in this same dying world and I think that's pretty cool um and the I would say the that Mork Borg violates a lot of these rules and also sort of um let's not deal with Mork Borg because Mork Borg is truly something all its own and it's beautiful and it's horrible and it's everything you ever wanted um yeah so it could be too wide and then and then um i don't so once you build that i don't want you to decorate it so so one of the things um i see like people playing one ring got a new solo thing coming out for children of moria i cannot play in an ip uh that unless i know everything about it which is like the case for warhammer just because i've read like a hundred books i I've, you know, imbibed like a hundred thousand hours of lore into that. I can name you like every named uh, Adeptus Sororitas there is, but like I can't be in a world that somebody has already filled in. And, um, you know, like uh, you take like the Misty Vale and Dragon Bane, the Misty Vale, you know, does have places and stuff like that and has characters and it has, you know, big plot points, but you can it's not the whole world of Dragon Bane. It's like the first place they're going. There's all this stuff that we don't know yet. And, um, or maybe we, we could know it, but we don't speak Swedish. Um, but like playing in Lord of the Rings universe or playing in Alien or Blade Runner, um, it kind of feels like if you've ever moved in with somebody who it's their apartment and you get like a room in it. And it's like, this is already filled with you. I can't hang posters. I can't decide to put something on this wall. I can't put a coffee maker here. I can't change what we're doing with this because it's it's already been decorated. And I have a hard time with that because I even if, even if someone says, don't worry about it, no matter what happens in this RPG, just let it flow, I'm constantly thinking about like the logic of that universe and saying, oh, well, I, actually, I know this about xenomorphs and this time doesn't match up and this was in the Silmarillion and this kind of... I can't manage that. Um, and so I, I would love for an, a TTRPG to become so uh, prolific or, or well-known that it, that it spawns its own thing, but I don't want to play in an IP. I don't want to um, live in a house that's already decorated. Okay, theoretically can play forever yeah so this is um this is one that comes up a lot and and thank you um comment recently i talked about outsiders and said oh on the back it said like one to two hour play time and i said that's that's always a little bit of a bummer for me because that puts me in a headspace of like board games but what this comment said is like you can use the same bounty hunter and just kind of make it like a serialized um mandalorian type thing and that's pretty cool, and and I agree. And, and you could use that to to create something special. But there is something to be said or about what the intent of the game was in the play of the game. And I want to. I probably will not play forever, any game. But I want to believe that I can. I want to believe that there is, you know, using the tools here, and then with the alchemy of my imagination. I can live in this universe forever. And so because of that, I don't I don't prefer funnels as like anything more than maybe if I'm bored for a night and I just want to play. But again, this is my ideal dream uh, TTRPG. And I hope I don't mind these things <laughs> too much, like fatally, because the one I'm making right now for Pocket Quest is a, a probably like a one to two hour game. But again, this is like limited to 25 pages. And so 
um, I had to, to form fit it to that. There's nothing against people who play that way. Um, but for me, the reason I solo is to create this, this world. And I want to be able to, I don't want to have a time limit on that. I don't want to have like something that when I get it, I'm done. Okay. And, and if, if you have that in mind, um, which is why I think, uh, it should be either very wide or very narrow. Okay. So, so the, the very wide would be a sort of what this, uh, across a thousand dead planets looks like it's going to be you, you take on this diver role <sighs> i shouldn't get it 60 pounds i could i could get it though uh, all right um you can go on forever with it uh or very narrow and the best you know i mean the to me the undisputed emperor empress emperado of this is the sort of like 4 AD kind of thing where you know you have this like mission you put it out um somebody or I'm sorry you have this mission you follow it to its completion somebody who I think uh does an amazing job with this is Alfred Valley Alfred um does like 24 word RPGs has like RPGs you could play in your head. Look up Die Dream. Die Dream you could play in your head, like while you're falling asleep, and it has like a dice rolling system that you do in your head, and it actually works. Um, I think I've mentioned that in a video before, but but yeah. So I like I like that as as sort of something that functions in a different way, or can be used as inspiration. Or I want it very wide. But again, I don't want it this middling thing where it's kind of like I have to elbow through to make space for myself. Um, but then it's still treated as if like I'm responsible to populate that world. It's getting a little vague here with the things I'm saying. Um, so let me try to uh, say some things. Oh, okay. This one, uh, this one is just gives me examples of play. This is huge. Um, in uh, what was the uh, Broken Cask Society? Um, there is like lots of these play examples that are like, so say this person says this, you say this, you roll a six. Okay, great. Now you give them this, you earn the, I love that. That is so helpful because that is, that is showing me in your words, in this conversational tone, tone, how this should play out. Because without that, the rules can tend to be like a, a prism and it, it can suck in the taste of the environment and it can suck in. Wow. That's the worst definition of prison I've ever heard. It sucks in the taste of the environment. It, it fractalizes the light of the environment such that it's like baking soda in the refrigerator. If that actually worked, um, you can be influenced by other games that you've played and sort of misread the instructions or change them to your own and not saying that that's bad. Okay. If you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but just in terms of like getting this, you know, peak platonic experience of playing this game, examples of play are huge. Gives me milestones to look forward to and a system to make my own. Now I mentioned, uh, mentioned four against darkness. Uh, one of the things that is a little sad about those is you could just like flip to the last page and see what like the strongest weapon is. Now, I know you could do this on, like, Nintendo games when they used to give you the little instruction guide. So, I I understand that. Like, as an adult, I'm able to um, make that make sense. But it always makes me kind of sad because I say, oh, yes, I know it's the journey, etc. But, like, I once I get that, there's nothing past that. And I want it so that I have milestones. I have level. I can level up. I can get new weapons. I can join new guilds. I can get new skills and abilities. But naturally, there's finite space, you know, even with 450 pages of this RPG across a thousand dead planets that I may or may not get. Even with that, there is a finite amount in that book. And so I want there to be those milestones. I want to feel like that accomplishment. I want things to look forward to. But on the upper limit, 
I would like there to be a system for me to make my own. Let me forge my own ultimate weapons. Let me forge my own bosses. Give me like, give me a peek into your system and show me how to do that so that I can continue to play with this game, right? So say if the last um, boss of the game is, um, you know, a, uh, like a, a stone golem, show me what it take what it took to make that golem and 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 let me make a fire golem that i could then go to a different land to combat uh shows me how to document my journey this gets left off a lot uh and i am guilty of this too i've just thought about that recently of with giving instructions to say like yeah and then just you know journal this however you'd like because i personally get as type B as I am, I thrive with like a certain level of structure. And when I, when it doesn't tell me what to write, I get this weird, um, maybe it's a people pleasing rule following anxiety of like, well, I don't want to write too little, but then I'll write too much. And now I'm kind of exhausted by this. And I feel like I'm writing a book and I don't feel like I'm playing. Show me how to journal. Show me how to record my progress. Uh, give me recommendations. And if I want to change that, I'll change it. But if you give me those directions, I'm playing your game and not just writing. Okay. And that's that I think a lot of people that critique journaling RPGs, I think that is part of it is that the RPG doesn't do an, a good enough job to tell you what is expected of you. Or it gives you very wide expectations. It says, you know, this could be three words or it could be six pages. Whatever you prefer. Don't do that. Tell me. One paragraph and then I'm all alone. I'm playing the solo RPG alone. If I want to go hee hee hoo hoo, I'm going to do, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to write um, 600, you know, stone tablets that I chisel. Then that's fine. I'll do it. But tell me um, what you want from me. All right. Uh, penultimate one here. I just dropped. Gives me a reason to choose. No, oh, sorry. Gives me a reason to choose this game over real life IRL. Um, I have to say this. This gets into maybe my own preferences and stuff, but I just see more and more games that are like um, the premise of this game is you take on the role of a, a kid named Tom or whatever name you want and you have to go to high school. Will you be able to hack it? I know there's a market for those kind of games because the Sims exist, okay? So no hate on that, but I need some reason why playing this game is, is going to be more enjoyable than playing the game of my own life because I'm already negotiating workplace relationships and deadlines and finances i really don't want to play a game that's just another person's life who can't actually make any money or get a promotion or whatever and so because of that but but there is this like late lately there's a trend towards like a fascination with the banal and not in like a napoleon dynamite slice of life sort of way like wow people really are weird aren't they but more of like a celebration of um, boredom, and I and I and I could probably do a whole video on how this is this is a just kind of one of the problems of like the internet age is we're constantly like just looking through the frame of our own handle. They can change at will. We like to alter that, and and in a way, RPGs are all like that, right? Because very interesting parts of a D and D campaign might be around the campfire more so than combat. But I, I need some reason to be in your world. I can't just be like, um, meet Edna. Edna is, uh, has to uh, bake cookies uh, for her office party, but she's going to buy some from the store and then put them on a plate as if they're her own. I'm like, I, I'm already Edna. I'm already Edna. And so I don't want to play. All right. I won't belabor that. All right. Last one. And I really don't want this to be misinterpreted anyway, because I think I, I, I already occasionally get comments that like project a person's politics onto me that I don't want. I don't want this to be a political channel. Um, 
at all. I, I won't acknowledge those kind of things. I'm sorry. Uh, you may project on me as all humans do, but uh, I just have to say in terms of solo play, um, please save space and, and chuck safety tools. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where to draw the line on a lot of things. I really do feel like I could be convinced of almost anyone's perspective. If they sat down with me and walked me through why they feel the way that they do, I could see myself going, you know, I'm really not feeling that, but I could see why they feel that way, right? Um, and I definitely could empathize with almost every person unless what, I f what they feel is like uh, what they – what they feel is some sort of willful ignorance or, or um, something that is motivated by a, a sort of lower vibration kind of feel. But um, I, I just, in what universe do I need a safety tool for the contents of my own mind? In what universe do I need to look up tools to stop myself from thinking of something? Because like, that I, I don't know what you would do outside of the game if you could not like create psychic boundaries. I suppose you go to therapy and I don't think it's the role of an author of a game book to to recommend such things to somebody for a solo play. I honestly, you know, I, I won't I, in terms of group play, you know, there could be um, especially for newer GMs some some like third rails and stuff that they could be more sensitive about um dealing with with situations with with people who you broach difficult subjects they don't want to talk about them i think there, there's something there in a solo game i have seen solo games with a spread two pages on like safety cards and i don't i really don't understand this and i'm not trying to say like you're soft or like rub some dirt on it but what in the world is going on that I need to have safety tools when I'm alone? Because if I need them when I'm alone, there's like a bigger problem here than just like going through this game. And I find it quite audacious to suggest that a person does not know how to take care of themselves if they are capable enough of sitting down with a pen and paper and some dice and a pen and going and creating a, a log of an imaginary world that they're creating for their own entertainment, I would hope that this is not happening as this person is like out presently outrunning some sort of trauma or, or, or presently going, you know, maybe it's a distraction or something like that. Let it be a distraction then. Let it be a distraction. All right. I'm off my soapbox. I please. I don't give get me the wrong way. I don't want to become one of these channels that just like bemoans this or that because um, I know there's plenty of content out there for that. I'm not interested in it. It is a never-ending conversation. I'm talking about uh, in terms of design alone, my ideal game, that's my opinion, and I'm sticking to it. Uh, not really. I'm highly convincible. So if anyone has a reaction to this uh, that's n that doesn't, uh, start with like an insinuation that I'm stupid. Uh, please write it down in the comments. I'd love to interact with nice comments that I feel like interacting with. Uh, otherwise, have a great whatever. I don't know what time it is for you. All right, have have 